Wow, has it been over nine months since I've uploaded a regular video? I hope that this one doesn't disappoint. For almost 20 years, my home server consisted of a single machine I called Socks. While living in Alaska, I got into buying some used computers and settled in with one of those too, along with my Odroid C4. Fast forward and Sox is dead, and I have two desktop servers, and now two rack mounted ones as well. This is where I may have gone a little overboard, and I'm assessing how I can go forward. To be honest, for years I've wanted a server rack and a way to mount Sox into it. Prior to our move last year, I did have a single HP Elite desk sitting on a shelf in a cabinet. Since we've moved though, I've come into possession of two rack mount cases. Instead of spending a lot of money on new motherboards and drives, I opted to go the used route, and I'm not confident I ended up making the best choices. The first rack mounted case is by Rack Choice, a 3U case capable of holding seven drives, albeit not very easily. It accepts either micro ATX or mini ITX motherboards has three fans on the front, as well as a place for two 60 millimeter fans on the back. There's no filter, and the only way to gain access to the drives is from the top. Because this build was really just testing things out, I gutted my wife's old HP desktop, putting the power supply and motherboard in. Those fit okay, and I'm able to run five SATA drives with the onboard ports. It is running an Intel Core i7-6700 along with 48 gigabytes of RAM. If I have all the drives spun down, the power draw is around 23 watts. But I'm running into some issues with that, so idle power really is about 44 watts. My plans is to make this my new everything server, so I installed my two old 3 terabyte drives from Sox Mark III's decommissioning. At 13 years old, they still run, but are looking a little long in the tooth. I'm not feeling creative with names, so this PC is just called SR1, basically meaning it's the first server that is rack mounted. The second case, aptly named SR2, is a 4U case by Rack Owl that can hold 15 drives. Okay, so I'm not setting up a Storinator clone or anything like that but it allows some expansion for sure. Because of that, I looked on eBay for a motherboard that had lots of SATA ports, and I ended up getting a MSI X99A Raider motherboard for around $65. What they didn't say, but it kind of looked like it in the pictures, is it came with RAM, a CPU cooler, and under that was an Intel Core i7-5820K as well. Another thing they failed to mention was one of the PCIe X16 slots was damaged along with a few capacitors missing. My guess is there was a graphics card that wasn't supported properly. I ended up having to look around at the exposed pins to make sure none were touching and one of those attempts I actually missed and something sparked. Unfortunately, I did not catch that on camera. The front panel locks up, which I like. Hiding the power and reset buttons from wandering kids and cats is important to me. The three drive bays, each holding up to five drives, can come out of the front after removing some screws and pressing detents under the top cover. Each section has its own fan too. Because I want this to be a backup server with ECC RAM, I replaced the i7 CPU with a Xeon E5 2660V4 a 14-core hyper-threading server processor with base frequency of 2 GHz and turbo boost up to 3.2 GHz. This also impacted power draw though, with idle going now to 72 watts, which is 12 watts over what the i7 was drawing. I guess that's what I get for wanting 28 CPU threads, but to be honest, I, I got the processor for $11, so I figured it was worth a try. Neither of these cases came with sliding rails, so I'm just using some adjustable rack rails that they sit on. It makes for some awkward maintenance for sure. 
SR2 is also really deep. My plan is to make this my second backup server. So for now, I have a couple of used HGST 8 terabyte hard drives, but I'll probably be installing a SATA host bus adapter with some SAS drives as well. Both machines make more noise than I'd like. Yes, I think I'm becoming a snob when it comes to that now. Um, things get quieter if I can get the hard drives to spin down. There is conflicting information on if this helps or hinders drive longevity, but I've had the 13 year old three terabyte drives going to standby after 10 minutes since they were brand new and they are still running fine. So far though, I'm having issues with any drive parameters issued with HD Parm from taking effect in SR1. I don't know if this is something with the motherboard or if something else weird is going on. What do you think? Is this overrated or something you'd like to see some more of? Let me know in the comments or just comment Battleship and I'll know you've made it this far. In the end, I've scratched the itch of owning a rack mount computer, but to be truthful, I'm a little disappointed. I'm sure there are things that I could do to make these machines more tolerable, but for now I can't sink much more money into them. Speaking of which, both server cases I received through Amazon Vine, and only one is still available at the time of this recording. I'll have a link to it in the description below. That's it for now. Thanks for stopping by. Until next time, I hope things are not terrible. Postscript addendum. So I did end up ordering some rack owl rails that are supposed to work with SR2, the big case down there. So uh, I will get those installed at some point and give an update.